in Bilu, your first consultation is always free. If your home is underwater or you are behind on your mortgage and you're confused about what to do, we can help. Call our office today, 954-596-0669 or 1-877-BILU-LAW. That's 1-877-BILU-LAW. At Bilu and Bilu, our lawyers have more than 20 years combined experience in real estate law. The banks have lawyers, and so should you. The lawyers at Bilu and Bilu can help you modify your loan or apply for a short sale while they defend your case in court. Contact the lawyers at Bilu and Bilu today so you can sleep easy tonight. Your home is your castle. Trust the professionals at Bilu and Bilu to defend it for you. The law office of Bilu and Bilu handles foreclosure defense in Broward and Palm Beach and all 67 Florida counties. Call the law offices of Bilu and Bilu today at 954-596-0669 or visit us on the web at bilulaw.com. That's B-I-L-U-L-A-W.com. And we're back for the second half hour. Remember, our show is every Friday and Monday from 4 to 5. I thought it's Monday and Fridays. Something like that. (laughs) We have, (laughs) believe it or not, we have 18 shows that we do each month. And sometimes you have a show that you just really love doing. And this is one of them because, wow, this is when you really need help. Let me introduce you to our friend. Gil Bilu of Bilu and Bilu, and Gil does foreclosure defense. He does, You do bankruptcy, too. Bankruptcy, Real too. Real estate. Real estate closings. If you're buying the property because your foreclosure is far enough in the past that you can come in and get a new mortgage and buy another property or you put the cash away, we're here to help you with that, too. We also work with property investors. You've but, saved so wait a many second. people. Let me just tell people, if they'd like to watch today's show... They could go to your website. It's www.bilulaw.com. Absolutely. And also, if you have a question for Gil about foreclosure or bankruptcy, you could call here at 888-565-1470. You know, like I was saying before, you have helped so many people. You've changed so many lives because when you've got a foreclosure on your shoulders... Whoa. There's nothing like it. But before we even get to that, I just got to say, you know, I'm sure you tell everybody you love them and they're no. great. But he here, does. I don't. Wait, the, end of the, <laughs> la, the, the end of the last show, here in the two, you harmonized my name. That was pretty cool. I got to say. <laughs> you I like made my that. Day there. <laughs> that wasn't planned. <laughs> Write that down so we don't forget. <laughs> for the next show. Uh, no, so, but you know, we have a lot of respect for you, though. Oh, absolutely. I, I have tremendous respect for you guys. This is a great show, We're providing a great service to the community. Um, and, you know, again, that's something that we do. I'm in my line of business because I like to help people. Would I make a lot more money throwing people out of their houses? Probably. I'm a good lawyer. Um, but I like keeping them in. But, you know, one thing I want to touch on when we get started is something that actually happened to me this week is what happens when it goes wrong, right? What happens when it goes south? So I, I, this case, perfectly positioned. Loved it. Fantastic. Great. Pushed it through. Filed the bankruptcy in the middle pushed out the time. Now we finally get to trial. It was the end of last month. So it was after our last show. And I'm amped for trial. And my client's like, well, what should we do? I said, look, we got a great case to try here. You're try- you're playing for more time in the house. We win this a trial. I mean, we, we got a long time. Otherwise, you know, what's the difference? You're going to say another month, month and a half. Let's see what we can do. Right. And I said, we got a good case. We're going to go. And I'm always honest with my clients. If I don't think we have a good case, if I think we're just going to get hammered, I don't like to go to trial to lose. I don't think that does a does a good service to my client. Certainly doesn't do anything for right, me. Right, and you don't want them to have to spend additional money to. All right, precisely. Have to so, so I'm sitting with the, the, this one particular uh, family, and I got close to them. Like they've been they've been clients for five years. You get to know people. You get to care about them. Um, and now we go to trial, and I'm ready to strike. And I go in, and I'm watching the judge, and I'm letting the plaintiff present their case. And the judge is looking at me because she's a new judge on the bench in Broward. I hadn't had a trial in front of her before. She'd only seen me argue motions. She's watching me like, when are you going to do something? When are you going to do something? What are you doing? What are you doing? Right? So I'm like, I'm letting their evidence in. I'm peppering their, their expert with, uh, peppering their witness with questions. But really, I hadn't hit my, my, uh, my death blow yet. <clears throat> He's a bull. He hadn't hit his stride <laughs> yet. You know, no, 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 no. Like, I had to kind of lull them into it, thinking they were going to get a nice, easy trial. Well, it turned out in this case, 
that the bank is going to have a lot of trouble proving standing, proving that they owned the note at the time the mortgage was filed, uh, or at the time, the, sorry, the lawsuit was filed. And so now plaintiff is done, they've rested their case, and I go in for the kill. I go in and I'm really hitting them on, it was very, very deep into the evidence, but you know, basically I was able to find that they weren't able to prove, they had no proof that this plaintiff had bought the property, had bought the loan prior to filing this lawsuit. Ready, I go in. The judge at one point is just looking at them, like, "What are you going to do about this? Like, how did you miss this in your own notes? How did you miss this in your own prep?" And now, now she sees what I'm doing. She's smiling at me. Well, unfortunately, the judge gave them chance after chance to try to fix their case. Uh, she actually gave them another 20 minutes to try to find evidence. Which, after five years, you think they'd have it? Is that normal in court. though? In court, no, it's. It's very abnormal, and, and judges, and I will give the judges a lot of credit, is, you know, they're dealing with a difficult situation, and they're really trying to balance the equity. She, she was trying, trying to, to be fair. Things, she's trying to be fair. So she gives them 20 minutes. They find something, but they only have it on email. So she's giving them another hour, right? We oh go break for God. lunch. This is ridiculous, right? So now we go break for lunch. I come back. They hand me a document this thick. It's a, an assignment and assumption agreement. Basically purported, it was supposed to show that prior to the lawsuit being filed, that this bank that was suing my client's um, had, uh, had had purchased the note. Only problem was, one, I objected to it coming in regardless. I had five minutes to review it. That's not fair to me. Right. Judge lets it in over my objection. Now I'm looking at this thing. It's not signed by anybody but the service or nobody but the, the bank that's actually servicing the loan, not the one that supposedly owns it and not the one that was transferring it to them. Well, Your Honor, even if you let this in, you can't use this to prove standing. Judge, for whatever reason, decided she was given to the judge, the plaintiff, to the, the judgment of the plaintiff that day. I was, I was crushed because you know, look, if I lose fair and square, hey, I lost fair and square. But that wasn't fair if and I, square. It, yes. When, when one of the bank's attorneys turns to another friend of mine in the courtroom that is watching the rest of this trial go on and is like, "Oh, he just got robbed," you know something's wrong. Now here's the issue we have: my client doesn't have the money for an appeal. So that was my you, next question was, so can you appeal you that? So it, well, happens to be, I have other clients. And so I was talking about real estate investors that I work with. I, I have a, a client that likes to, that buys up properties from people in foreclosure, gives them a little cash, he gets a deed to the property, and he takes over the case. He rents it out in the meantime, makes himself a nice amount of money. And, you know, generally his clients walk away happy. I walk away, ha you know, they walk away happy. He hires me, so I'm very happy, right? So I was talking to him, and I said, look, this is the case that I've got. This is what happened. I said, I think we've got a lock solid appeal. I think, you know, the, the appeal itself will go on for a year regardless. I said, but these people can't afford it. I said, normally I tell you, uh, he's an investor, but I look out for him. You know, he's my buddy now. I was like, look, I always look out for you. I tell you not to buy property after a judgment. I used to do that. And I said, this is a great case. And I go through it with him. And so, you know, at the end of the day, what's happening now, it looks like we're appealing the case. Uh, I'm trying to get the court to stop the sale while the appeal is going on. And if we do, you know what? He's going to give my clients money to vacate the property, which they need. They need the money to move. They need first, last, and security. Right. You know, they need money to move out. Like, this stuff all costs money. It costs more what they don't have. So he's going to rent it out and make money on that. He's going to rent it out. He's going to pay them for their interest in the property. He's going to rent it out. He's going to fund their appeal. And, so you know, it's win-win. Sure. You know, if you've got a bad case and you lost, there are still options out there. Um, but you've got to act fast. Why do I say you've got to act fast? After that judgment's entered, you got 30 days to file your appeal. You don't file that appeal in 30 days, you're done. You file it on day 31 because you made a mistake on your calendar, too bad, day late and a dollar short. That's what the appeals, well, they don't say it that way, but that's that's the rule at the appellate court. You've got to file your appeal within that 30 day time period. So what I've done for not just these clients, but for, for other clients that either represented themselves or didn't have good representation at trial, I said, look, I'll charge you a flat fee. Let me review your file. Let me see what went on. Let me see if we've got a good issue for appeal here. Because if we've got a good issue for appeal, I'll take on that appeal. I'm happy to take it on. I'm happy to fight it up. Because when you're not in the trial court, when you're not in front of the judges who are under orders to get the cases cleared out, either end them in judgments or end them in dismissals, you've got – sober is the wrong word – but you've got judges who can distance themselves from it, who can look at it and say, wait a second – are we applying the law fairly? And I have to say in Florida, uh, Palm Beach County, Broward County, we're in the fourth DCA, the fourth district court of appeals. We probably have some of the smartest, most talented judges 
uh, anywhere in this country, if not the world. Okay, so wait a second. So the biggest yeah. question is, yeah. so what happens if you do win the appeal? This particular case, because we will be attacking the sufficiency of the evidence. We're not saying that the evidence shouldn't have been let in. Right? We're saying that the evidence that got in doesn't prove what it's supposed to prove. If I win this, if we win this appeal, if it goes the way I, I sincerely hope and pray that it will, then the case is going to be sent back down for dismissal. Okay, so what does that mean for the client? So what does that mean for the client? Well, that means for the client that the bank has to start all over from, ground, from, from square one. They have to file a new lawsuit, and they have to try to sue on it all over again, and we get to start fighting them all over again. So in the interim, do they get to keep the house? I mean, how does that right. play? Well, so, so here's, here's, the, here's the interesting thing. Right, so here's the interesting thing. Right, now we've got to go in. Now, I'm fine. I just filed the motion today, actually, in the case. Um, it's a motion for stay pending appeal. I'm asking the trial court, right, the court that handed down the judgment, say, look, we're appealing the case, right? We filed our appeal. Um, but if you sell this house out from underneath these people while this is going on, you're not, you know, the, the, the harm's going to be irreparable. And I'll tell you a little secret. The banks don't want that house sold if the appeal's going to go the other way. Why? Because now they're not on the, they can't give the house back anymore, right? They've sold it to a third party. What do they have to do? They have to pay the people back. They have to dig into their pockets and come up with oh. money. <laughs> oh, yeah. And so a lot of times we found that the banks will agree to it. But again, you know, it sounds like a great strategy. Um but what I have to warn you, um, I'm not one of those lawyers that will file an appeal when I have no basis. I won't do that to my reputation. I won't do that to my other clients because then I start to look like this serial filer. Right. We don't get anything accomplished. But there are options out there if things went badly. The main thing that you can do, obviously, is prevent it from going badly. Right. That, that's where we want to start. We want to start early. And we want to start working on it when we when laying out a plan for what we're going to do. Um, and I'm going to pop in with my number again. It's 954-596-0669. Call the office. You can set up a free consultation. I'm happy to sit down and talk with you. Um, <clears throat> hey, Gil, you know what we've learned about you? What? That if there's a way to win a case, even if it goes to court, man, you just find everything out there in psych... I'm not putting other attorneys well, that's down. What here's he loves. The, he here, loves the fight. He likes to fight for his clients. But which here's is a big the thing. You said you've got 30 days to appeal. Now, you know there's attorneys that have this long list of shingles of what they do. Could an attorney who really doesn't know what he's doing not know, not know about the 30 days, which could kill the client? Um, if you've got an inexperienced attorney, they might miscalculate it. Um, if they haven't read the rule that says you need 30 days, Shame on them. They're probably going to be disbarred soon. So wow. I, I would think that most lawyers know when to file the appeal. It's the quality of the appeal that you file and knowing when it's going to be in your client's best interest to file the appeal. And really you keep your difference. clients in the house for probably a long, lot longer than most attorneys would well, be able why, to. Well, Listen, if you're going to go and hire somebody to handle your foreclosure, you want somebody that specializes in foreclosure defense. And that is one of your specialties, and I'm allowed to say that. Right. So... <clears throat> that's who you want to use. You don't want to just go to any attorney that says, yeah, I do that, and I do criminal law, and I do let other me, types of law. Well, let me tell you, I've had people come in, uh, oh, yeah, my brother is an attorney, so I had him file an answer for me, and now there's a judgment. And I'm like, well, your brother does, no offense to divorce lawyers, because I don't, I, I don't do family law anymore. <laughs> your brother does divorce. He doesn't know anything about property rights. Um, and this is where we've had this very interesting uh, synthesis. Um, you know, my background, you know, I had a good deal of, of um, background in litigation, but really the main part of my background was in real estate, was in title, was in knowing how interest and property move, knowing what's appropriate, what's inappropriate. You grew up in that. I grew up in it. That's what I did. <laughs> so right? it gives you an edge in that particular well, field. So now I took that experience and, you know, I worked with other attorneys that really had much more trial experience that were um, uh, uh, personal injury attorneys that really knew the evidence code better at the time than I did. You know, you're going to only get better, right? You never know everything. If you think you know everything, you got to You're mistaken. You're mistaken. Um, and so I was able to learn from them some of the tactics they used they were successful at. And I was able to show them some of the things I knew that I was successful at. And, you know, together we both did better for our clients, or we all did better for our clients by sharing our knowledge. And what, what's kind of propped up in Florida, uh, what's cropped up in Florida is this, this small informal network foreclosure defense attorneys, some with a real estate background, some with a litigation background. 
and we've worked together. And so, you know, most of us are small firms, solo practitioners, uh, maybe two or three people, five people in the office for the most part. And we've been able to put our brains together and really get the power that you see coming out of a big firm because we're able to collaborate and cooperate with each other. And instead of looking to compete with each other, we like to help each other out. And listen, everybody knows, I mean, large firms do what they have to do. But when you're with a small firm, obviously, you care about your clients. You get emotionally vested with the client. We do. Uh, you know, absolutely. So we there's do. benefits of going with a smaller firm. Absolutely. Uh, you know, absolutely. You're going to get a little more personalized care and attention. Uh, that is, you know, without a doubt. Um, if you want to see some of our client success stories, you can check us out on Facebook. Uh, we're at Bilu Law. Um, you can go on our website, www.bilulaw.com, or you know, stop and talk to one of our attorneys. Yeah, great information. And website. free consultations as well. If you want, you have a question for Gil, Absolutely. you could call his office, and he does offer free consultations. Hey, we've got to go to break, and we come back. We have more with attorney Gil Bilu of Bilu and Bilu. We'll be right back. <sighs> At the law firm of Bilu and Bilu, we can help you if you are facing foreclosure. Don't lose your home due to foreclosures by the bank or mortgage company. Call the law offices of Bilu and Bilu at 954-596-0669. You have rights and we can help you exercise them. At Bilu and Bilu, your first consultation is always free. If your home is underwater or you are behind on your mortgage and you're confused about what to do, we can help. Call our office today, 954-596-0669 or 1-877-BILU-LAW. That's 1-877-BILU-LAW. At Bilu and Bilu, our lawyers have more than 20 years combined experience in real estate law. The banks have lawyers and so should you. The lawyers at Bilu and Bilu can help you modify your loan or apply for a short sale while they defend your case in court. Contact the lawyers at Bilu and Bilu today so you can sleep easy tonight. Your home is your castle. Trust the professionals at Bilu and Bilu to defend it for you. The law office of Bilu and Bilu handles foreclosure defense in Broward and Palm Beach and all 67 Florida counties. Call the law offices of Bilu and Bilu today at 954-596-0669 or visit us on the web at bilulaw.com. That's B-I-L-U-L-A-W.com. <laughs> and we're back. Um, we have attorney Gil Bilu with us. And I'm telling you, if you're having problems, maybe you're starting to get those letters in the mail. And as soon as you get the letter, call Gil. There you yeah, go. Tell them why, though. So I'm going to tell you why. Here's something. I'm going to tell you. You wanted a good story. So you told me on the break you wanted to hear a good story. I do actually have a really good story. So... Um, <clears throat> you know, everybody heard about these huge settlements with the attorneys general and all these banks are paying all this money uh, and they're supposed to be going to principal reduction. People go, well, we're not seeing principal reductions and we're seeing them here and there. Well, I have to say I'm very happy to report that one of our clients uh, received a loan modification offer in conjunction with uh, the Florida attorney general's office, Pam, Bo Pam Bondi's office, um, where they're reducing the principal on his loan by about... I want to say about 45 percent wow that's huge that is huge that's turning his property from being underwater to being to having equity um wow. and they're going in they're making the payments a lot more affordable uh, we just got the trial plan in the mail this week but it looks fantastic you know so so you know i know i've said on the show before we see a lot of principal re principal reduction we're not seeing so much anymore well we're still seeing it and so you know, the, the important thing to consider to remember is, look, if you're coming in for a loan modification, you're trying to save your house, that's going to be your most important thing. That's right. really you what you're looking that. for. Right, you handle that. Absolutely. We bring clients in. We give them paperwork to fill out. We review the paperwork with them. Once it's filled out, we make sure that we've got our package together. And, look, we have experience going through and working with these lenders. We know what they want to hear. We know what they want to see. Um, if something can be framed two ways, we know the right way to frame it. You and know, if they're not experience. eligible, you'll be honest with them as well. I've had people walk in and say, I want to save my house, and I'll go through a quick rudimentary sketch with them. And I say, okay, you know, how much you make a month? What's the value of your property? What's the insurance? What's this? What's that? And I look at it and I say, 
I could take your money and try to work on a loan modification for you, but it's going to fail. Unless you start making more money, there's nothing I can do. Or you know, some people that actually make too much money, I can't get their loan modified. Um, so there's certain criteria. Right. We know the criteria. We know what the banks are looking for. We know what they're looking at. So we really take that extra step that some people don't take to look at the situation and tell the client, look, if we can get your loan modified, this is what the payment's going to be. Um, now, if we don't think the bank's going to accept it, we tell them, so look, you know, your hard cost on the loan is $900 a month. The payment that you're going to be able to afford is $1,100 a month. We're asking the bank to take $200 a month. They're not going to do it. Don't waste your money on the modification. Let's look at plans B and C. On the same token, you know, we'll look at that same person. Okay, look, let's say that $1,100 is something we think might work for the bank. And then they look at me, they go, well, I can't afford to pay that every month. I say, well, then let's not bother with loan modification. It's not going to help you. Right, because you because know the banks are going to accept. Well, there's nothing worse than getting somebody a loan modification, and then they look at it, you've worked hard, you got it, we accomplished something, we're happy. A little little bell we ring in our office sometimes, <laughs> you know, when we get a new <laughs> modification in or we get a short sale approved. Uh, but there's not some worth, nothing worse than doing that. You call the client all excited. They're like, I can't afford that payment. You're going, well, you should be able to. You, you can't. Okay, I wish we hadn't worked this hard. We would have worked on some other options for you. But if that does happen, we can always switch tracks, right? So, okay, we got the modification and either it got denied or the person can't do it or now they've decided they don't want to keep the house. Well, we can switch tracks. We can list the property for a short sale. Um, you know, we work with the banks. So... You know, as much as we like to fight them in court, we also work with them in court. So, you know, I've had clients that say, you know what, I'm done with this property. I'm ready to move. I'm moving back home to Ohio or whatever it is. What can we do? Oh, we got a trial coming up. All right. I'll start talking to the bank's attorney. So, look, we got this trial coming up. You want a judgment, obviously. They say, yeah. I say, all right, well, here, we'll give you the judgment if you give us this in return. What's the number one thing that I ask for in return? Renee, you know this. Waiver of... The deficiency. deficiency. Right. And we yes, I do deficiency. know that from experience. Thank you <laughs> right. very much for reminding me. <laughs> well, what do we do? That's the first thing we ask the bank for. And you know something, and that was not anything that was mentioned to me. And thank God that my time frame has come and gone. Thank God. Statute of limitations has passed. Yeah. Look, I'm talking to people. I just spoke to somebody today, actually, randomly. I just, uh, I, was, uh, I was at a store. I was talking to the clerk. They knew I was an attorney. I've met them before. And they're like, yeah, you know, now the bank's coming after me for a deficiency judgment. Um, the banks are getting a lot more aggressive with that. You know, as people are employed again, as the employment rate goes up, people have income, people have money, people have started saving money. Now the bank's going, well, hey, wait, you still owed us money. We're going to come back after you for the difference between what the property was worth when we foreclosed on it and what what the judgment amount that we received was. Right. And let me just say something, mm -hmm. because most people don't know it. Whether you go through a short sale or a foreclosure, you still, there are deficiencies with the short sale, but you still, even if you foreclose mm -hmm. on a property and it's not done properly with the right attorney, you could still owe money from that as well. Absolutely. You know, that that's a problem. There are solutions to it. One, of course, is negotiating a judgment. So let's say someone says, look, I'm going to stay here for a little bit and then I'll get out of the house. I just want this over with. Okay, great. Comes time for trial, we'll work with the bank, we'll get you a waiver of deficiency if we can. It's not up to me, right? But all I'll try to do is get you a waiver of deficiency, get you a little extra time in the house, and get you some cash in your pocket. That's really what a lot of, you know, that's what some clients are looking for. They don't want to not know what's going to happen at trial. They, they want to have a definite answer, you know, I'm done with this, I'm ready to go, and that's fine. I understand that. You know, we're not dealing with a numbers game. It's not a pure gamble. Um, you know, this is people's lives that we're talking about. Right, and they have to uproot and move. And exactly, and they want to know. Give up their savings, which they usually put into the house. Right, and so, you know, we listen to each client. We sit down with them. We say, all right, what are your goals? These were the goals when you came in to see us three years ago. Now we're coming up to a trial. What are your goals now? What do you want to do? Whatever it's going to be. And I, I, let me Let me tell you, it's killed me. I've had some amazing cases. I'm like, I can't wait. I'm like drooling, salivating. Waiting right, this to is this the case bulldog. He loves to litigate. <laughs> and the client's like, you know what? I'm done. I just want to get the deficiency wave to move on with my life. You know what? If they walk away happy, that's really going to be the most important thing. Um, if you've got questions about us, give us a call, about this, give us a call at the office. 954-596-0669. Um, you know, when you call in, one of us might be able to talk to you right away. If not... Schedule an appointment to come in for a free consultation. We will sit down with you. 
We'll give you the care and attention that you need. Um, and we'll sit there and we'll put together a plan for you. You know, and I can tell you, I've had people come into the office and they're, not, they're scared. You right. know, because you're, you listen, you're overwhelmed when you yeah. can't pay your mortgage and you start getting notifications yeah. from the banks and you, you feel right. like you're lost. And I'm talking from experience. Right. And an off duty police officer comes to your door at seven o'clock at night. Knock, knock, knock. Right. What happens? That's scary in and of Very. itself. Getting served with a lawsuit. I got 20 days to answer. I don't know how to answer. Right. Well, you come into us, and I can't tell you how many people come in nervous, scared, not knowing what to do. We sit down, we say, okay, here, here's what, here's the plan that we're going to lay out. We're going to do a short sale. We're going to fight this case. We're going to, you know, we're going to work on a modification, whatever it is. And they walk out of the office relieved. Now, they haven't really done anything yet, right? But the fact that they know that they have they know- great representation, that's the biggest factor. Because like I said, I did not. Right. And I tried to do it myself. So do not, and I'm talking from experience, do not do it yourself. Call Gil Bilou Yes. And let him look over everything and handle. And actually, we've got a minute left. Sale. So, Gil, yeah. tell people again why they should hire your firm. Why should you hire our firm? Right. Well, it's always a great question. Look, we uh, we're dedicated. We have staff that cares. Um, they put their own blood, sweat, and tears into these files the same way myself and my partner Ron do. Um, why should you come to us? Because we're going to help you find the solution that you need. There are a lot of uh, bigger foreclosure defense firms out there, two or three bigger defense uh, foreclosure defense firms out there. Big is not better. Bigger is definitely not better. They do some fantastic work, but they're one size fits all. We have clients that come from those firms say, hey, they did a great job so far, but now I need another solution and there's nobody to talk to about it. You know, they don't want to help me modify the loan. They won't file my bankruptcy. You know, they just want to take the case to trial. Well, you know, we take that extra step because ultimately if I win at trial, but you're not happy. You didn't get what you wanted. Well, what's the point of the representation? Do anything for them. They just want to pay me money. Give everybody your phone All number right. and your website. So the number again is 954-596-0669. You can also check us out on the web, www.bilulaw.com. That's B-I-L-U-L-A-W.com. Or you can check us out on Facebook. We're also under there at Bilu Law. If you want to follow something interesting on Twitter, at GBilu, at G-B-I-L-U. I try to post interesting stuff, not only foreclosure defense related, also just, you know, about the person that bought my iced tea in front of me at the drive through McDonald's today. <laughs> so check them out. Okay. Hey, we will be back on Monday with more Ask the Experts. Bro, man, I love what you do. Thanks for coming Thanks. in today, Gil. Gil Thanks Bilu. for having me again. Bilu and Bilu. Hey, we'll see you again on Monday. Everybody have a great weekend. Without you, there is no us. Peace and love. We're out. Thanks for tuning in today to the Ask the Experts show with Steve-O and Renee. Tune in every Friday from 4 to 5 p.m. while some of the top local experts in their field from Broward and Palm Beach counties educate you in the areas of law, health, financial, and home improvement. You can also call our offices at 888-574-6999 to become an expert on our show. The opinions expressed on the preceding sponsored program were strictly